Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 22nd of the course Applied Seismology for Engineers. In lecture 21, we discussed about a phenomena known as liquefaction. In liquefaction, the soil will lose all of its in situ shear strength and will almost behave like a liquid. It primarily happens because of loading, external loading condition which may happen primarily because of earthquake, because of blasting, because of other construction activity which induce forces resulting in the formation of development of excess pore pressure which will push the particles away from each other. As a result, a particular soil medium, primarily we are discussing about cohesionless soil that will lose its strength in static condition where it was offering significant bearing capacity to any external overcoming load. Now, because of transition from almost closely packed material to another state where the particles are moved away from each other and the interparticular space is occupied by water which is also subjected to excess pressure. As a result, whatever load is coming on the surface, it will not the surface will not be able to withstand that particular load the load will start sinking. This particular process is called as liquefaction. If we take into account the seismic waves which are generated during a particular earthquake, there will be particle motion as the wave pass through a particular medium. Taken into account particularly the shear waves that will result in the development of excess pore pressure and other wave uh, related to particle oscillation will also contribute to this. As a result, understanding the phenomena of liquefaction starting with its initial state that means the state at which the soil was there in its in situ condition before it was subjected to increase in additional load which is coming maybe because of cyclic conditions, it may be coming because of static conditions such that collectively be both of these whether it is static condition or dynamic condition resulted in the increase in the confinement, reduction in the confinement, subjected to increase in uh, axial stresses or there is a change in void ratio condition. All these phenomena again depending upon whether in its in situ condition drainage is permitted to the soil or it is not. So, accordingly one can assess whether we are talking about drain condition then there will be dissipation of pore water pressure and then significantly we can see change in void ratio. If it is dense soil referring to lecture number 21, if it is dense medium initially it will show contractive behavior followed by strain softening and then dilation will be there. When such phenomena is happening in dense medium, there will be increase in void ratio that we have seen already referring to critical state of the soil. We also discussed in lecture 21 that whether the soil is initially dense or loose, one soil which is dense will subject it to initial contractive behavior followed by strain softening and dilation. On the other hand, the soil which is loose that will be subjected to contractive behavior, there will be continuous reduction in the void ratio and the stage come where dense material as well as loose material will reach to more or less same level of void ratio. That particular void ratio is called as critical void ratio and the state was defined as critical state. Such a state which is defined as critical state can be obtained at a known value of confining pressure. Repeating same set of strain control test, a locus of critical states which are corresponding to different value of confining pressure can be obtained and subsequently one will be able to develop critical state of the soil or critical void ratio line which is the locus of how the critical uh, state corresponding void ratio is a function of confining pressure. Accordingly, thus based on the initial state of the soil, it was found that some of the soils which are located below the CVR line or critical void ratio line are not susceptible to liquefaction. On the other hand, soils which are above CVR line are basically subjected to liquefaction. 
So, depending upon the initial state of the soil, one can understand whether the soil with respect to CVR line will undergo liquefaction or it will not undergo liquefaction. So, all those lines which are lying under the CVR line will not undergo liquefaction. So, in today's uh, discussion that is lecture number 21 referring to the end part of lecture 21 uh, where we discussed that even though based on the critical water ratio line we were able to find out the soils whether it was dense, whether it was considered as loose as far as the uh, uh, reaching to the critical state is concerned. But at the same time it was realized that when we are discussing with respect to flow, when we are discussing with respect to dissipation of pore water pressure, there were limitation in the strain control test which were performed earlier. As a result, most of the attributes which were uh, happening in dense medium or in loose medium because of external loading condition were not able to be reflected in their stress strain behavior. Castro later on in 1969. So, Castro in 1969, 1969 performed stress control test. Remember before this when we were discussing about critical water ratio line most of the tests were strain control test. That is why we were able to understand the drain behavior, undrained behavior of dense as well as loose material, but limitation with those were these strain control tests were not able to contribute or not able to make understand how the flow of the soil medium is initiated with respect to initial state of the soil and that is how many of the sample which were though identified as dense sample actually under undergone liquefaction in actual site condition. So, Castro in 1969 performed lot of strain control test, strain control test both on both on isotropic as well as an isotropic material. Remember these were stress control tests, earlier one was strain control test and based on these, based on the nature of these tests, it was observed, it was observed primarily related to strain control test on an isotropic material, observed primarily based on, primarily based on anisotropic samples. Now, whenever I am referring to anisotropic samples, I am looking at all the samples to be tested under strain, stress control test, anisotropic samples independent of whether the initial state is referring to dense soil, whether the initial state is referring to loose soil. So, it was observed primarily based on anisotropic condition. So, three sets, three principal natures were observed, were observed. More specifically, we can tell about two because one which is referring to intermediate state, there is uh, though the behavior is there, but sudden change is not there. So, that is a uh, mixed component of dense and corresponding to loose as well. So, three uh, specimens primarily were focused as well uh, corresponding to these three principal natures were observed. First one which was corresponding to loose specimen. Now, if you remember with respect to critical state or the samples which were observed for critical void ratio line with respect to loose, those were initially subjected to uh, those uh, indicated contractive behavior. But in case here, which I am also referring to specimen number 1, that is one specimen 
I am observing in a strain con uh, stress control test on isotopic uh, an isotopic material. So, specimen 1 when we uh, recollect whatever we have discussed in terms of critical word ratio line loose specimen since the beginning or with increase in confining pressure uh, diabetic stress these were subjected to continuous contractive behavior. However, in this particular case loose specimen we can write also over here loose specimen showed initial peak undrained strength. So, there is no continuous contractive behavior since the beginning of the sample or since the initial state of the sample, but there was an indication that loose or we can say very specifically about very loose sample, very loose sample. So, very loose specimen when they were subjected to stress control test, they showed actually initial there was gaining of the strength at very low corresponding axial strain at small axial strain. I am talking only about axial strain at very low axial strain and then the sample collapsed. So, whatever peak value it had attained again it is undergoing collapse or there is reduction in the confinement of the material resulting in now when we say it reached to peak strain uh, peak confining pressure and then there is collapse in the material subjected to reduction in the confinement. So, when the confinement is reduced to very low value what will happen the material will start flowing because there is no confinement around to retain the material in its in situ condition the material will start flowing. So, the material started flowing rapidly and the same procedure continued to larger strain. So, remember initiation of peak undrained strength was achieved corresponding to very low value of shear strain and then after which the material collapsed and subsequently there was loss in the confinement. When the loss in the confinement happens the material undergo had undergone flow and this continued to larger shear strain corresponding to at low confining pressure. So, confining pressure had reduced to very low value at the same time because there is there has been an initiation of flow liquefaction the material is undergoing continuous movement such specimens this is corresponding to very loose material more specifically we are discussing about cohesion loss soil. So, these identified were these samples were identified or the sample which were corresponding to very loose specimen one can refer to the classification of very loose specimen with respect to the relative density. So, these samples which initially showed corresponding to very low value of axial strain there is uh, peak under end strength followed by there is loss of confinement reduction in the confinement and that continue to very large value of shear strain. So, corresponding uh, very large value of axial strain. So, axial strain is becoming larger means the, the material is undergoing continuous flow. So, material was there which is undergoing, undergoing continuous flow. So, it is very high shear strain uh, axial strain and there is loss of confinement as a result collectively the samples were identified as liquefiable. So, these are the samples which are actually identified as liquefiable because these are critically resembling a state of the soil which is favorable with respect to flowing consistency. The confining pressure is very less the axial strain is very high resembling possibly there has been flow in the material. On the other hand there is another material which is corresponding to dense soil 
Now, if we remember again in case of loose soil whenever we discuss about critical void ratio line, dense soil since the beginning was showing continuous contractive behavior. However, in terms of loss of confinement that was not clearly resembling with respect to critical void ratio line. However, in this particular case whenever we are discussing about steady state line that we will come uh, later, here we are all also trying to understand what is the change in the state with respect to initial state which is justifying or giving the attribute related to flow characteristics of the medium. So, when we are discussing about dense specimen again we can call it as another specimen which is corresponding to dense soil classified based on the relative density of the medium. So, such specimens initially showed initially contracted which was also shown in if we recollect the discussion in uh, critical word ratio line. So, initially the sample shown some kind of contractive behavior the, the sample was initially taking load reached to its critical value and then undergone strain softening. In this particular case initially the sample was contracted here rem we rem remember we are discussing primarily in terms of how there is change in confinement, how there is change in diabetic stress. So, initial contracted and then subjected to then dilated. So, there is strain softening followed by dilation there will be orientation of the particles with respect to uh, along the, uh, the plane of movement and the same procedure continues until a relatively larger axial strain relatively high confining pressure. Remember the first case that is with respect to very loose specimen initially there was increase in the confinement once reached the uh, peak value there is loss in the confinement the sample collapse and the loss in the confinement followed by very large axial strain. In case of dense sample initially the sample contracted started taking a load followed by which there will be dilation and the same procedure there is subsequently increase in the confining pressure as well. Now, if you are able to recollect why there is increase in confinement primarily if we are discussing about dense sample when these samples are subjected to external loading condition or increase in diabetic stress there will be increase in void ratio because these are dense sample corresponding to dilation. So, whenever there is increase in void ratio subsequently there will be a reduction in the pore water pressure subjected to increase in the confining pressure and the same procedure continued very high confining pressure and very large axial strain very large strain. So, this entire process we have still not reached to very low value of axial strain which was uh, uh, the state reached in very loose specimen. So, here whether we are talking in terms of dilation or in terms of confining pressure or in terms of axial strain all these things are related to very large value in comparison to loose specimen. So, we have one specimen which initially showed peak followed by collapse and then very low confining pressure and very large axial stress, uh, strain. Another sample which is corresponding to dense specimen initially showed contractive behavior followed by dilation resulting in increase in void ratio subsequent reduction in the pore water pressure and then increase in confining pressure. And the same procedure continued to very large value of axial strain. Now, in between the two samples that means based on the initial state of the soil and based on the relative density it is very difficult to very clearly demarcate whether the sample is corresponding to very loose sample or dense sample. That means, we are talking about sample which are having intermediate relative density. So, such samples which are having intermediate relative density those samples will represent the mixed characteristics of both loose specimen as well as dense specimen. Initially there will be contractive behavior followed by that there will be collapse and then corresponding to very low value of confining pressure the sample will continue for larger axial strain. 
So, at intermediates, at intermediate densities or relative densities, so we are again talking about sample number 3 or specimen number 3. Another sample which is not corresponding to loose specimen, it is also not corresponding to dense specimen, but relative to intermediate stage of the sample. So, there will be initially exceedance of initial exceedance of peak strength, which is resemblance of very low uh, 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 dense sample followed by that uh, loose sample followed by that this is happening corresponding to low value of shear strain at low axial strain as well as confining pressure and low confining pressure. So, this is happening that means, it is reaching peak value after that followed by collapse or strain softening, strain softening in even in intermediate density because it has reached to peak value after that there is collapse followed by strain softening behavior and this strain softening behavior will only continue for for short duration and after that again the sample may start taking load and we can see some increase in the uh, confining pressure followed with onset or now we can see initially there was strain softening followed by that again we can see some kind of dilation, onset of dilation at intermediate strain. So, initially the sample took peak value followed by which there is strain softening in the material, the material is again subjected to reduction in the confinement, after that again it is showing dilative behavior followed by this and this is happening only up to intermediate strain. So, though it is showing the behavior of dilation, it is only restricting to intermediate strain. So, still corresponding to if you further continue this particular loading, further loading of the sample produce continuous dilation, produce continuous dilation in the material at high effective stress, higher confining pressure. So, again the material has started taking a load or we can see there is increase in the confining pressure corresponding to the sample and the same procedure will continue to higher strain. Again, when we are talking about strain, we are referring to axial strain. So, higher strain it is it is referring to. Now, here if we compare with respect to loose and dense specimen, initially there was peak value which was an indication of loose specimen. After reaching a peak value, there is reduction in the, uh, when I say peak uh, for loose specimen, it is referring to point number 1 mentioned over here. After reaching a peak value, the sample undergone collapse or strain softening is there in the particular material followed by which there is dilation, material are rolling and subsequently continuous dilation will be there. In addition, there will be gain in the confining pressure and this particular nature will continue to higher strain values. So, we are interested one can even develop these plots with respect to with respect to two parameters one is q value 
on y axis and epsilon a that is actual uh, strain in x axis. So, here we can see with respect to this particular point which is actually representing the initial state of the soil. Now, when we say about initial state of the soil means state of the soil before you started applying any external loading condition because which can trigger liquefaction basically. So, before this particular loading condition has initiated which is triggering liquefaction the sample at a particular site will also be having some value of initial confining pressure as well as initial effective stress. So, this is basically the initial state of the soil not the initial state at which the soil was uh, I mean before starting of the building you can say the load from building or surcharge load is already there in the soil. So, this initial state of the soil is corresponding to that particular load. So, you can say even this particular part is resembling external loading or surcharge. So, this is external loading or surcharge load corresponding to which one can determine how much is the initial state after which when the soil sample is subjected to additional load which is uh, because of static loading condition because of dynamic loading condition in addition to these which can actually trigger liquefaction in the specimen. So, here we can see if we recollect whatever has been discussed in the previous slides with respect to initial state if we are talking about any uh, uh, loose specimen. So, loose specimen initially showed some sign of peak strength with, with corresponding to low value of confining pressure uh, uh, relatively high value of confining pressure at low axial strain followed by which again the sample will undergo collapse and the same will continue to larger strain. So, this is specimen number 1 which is indication of liquefaction. Now, here we can say liquefaction means with respect to peak strength. So, that means if we are interested to find out the flow characteristics one can represent this particular point which is basically indicating with respect to the steady state where the sample has reached this was the state and when at which the sample was subjected to increased load because of external loading condition which was higher than the steady state corresponding loading in the sample. So, this is typically representing the sample corresponding to liquefaction this is again continued. So, this will continue like this up to larger uh, axial strain this is corresponding to liquefaction again there can be another sample. So, this is liquefaction or we can say with respect to loose specimen loose specimen initially there was marking of peak strength followed by which the sample collapsed and then it continued for reduction in the confinement and the same thing happened at low confining pressure and then subsequently it continued the, the uh, contractive behavior it continued subsequently there was uh, increase in pore water pressure and reduction in the confinement which continued to uh, large axial strain. Again there are additional sample which are corresponding to. So, there are initially there was contractive behavior followed by which there was strain softening and the sample continued to show some kind of dilation. So, you here we can see there is increase in the confinement after which though there is increase in confinement, but followed by which there was there is significant increase in the axial strain as well. So, we are discussing about the samples over here this was a sample for loose specimen another sample which is corresponding to dense specimen initially there was contractive behavior the sample started taking the load and this continued till intermediate stage after which there is increase in the confinement, but at the same time there is increase in the axial stresses as well axial uh, strain as well. So, that means the sample though it is subjected to increase in confinement or reduction in the void, uh, uh, pore water pressure, but that is correspondingly also can be anticipated with respect to increase in the axial strain. And this process will not continue to very large value of strain it will only restrict itself with respect to intermediate value of strain. So, this is again dilative 
this is dense soil and the behavior subjected to sure sign of dilation. show signature of dilation, signature of dilation. In dense soil, though there was increase in the confining pressure, but finally this nature of the soil has already reached to its steady state at corresponding to some value of uh, uh, axial strain. Now, in addition, so this was related to dense soil, we can also mark it as sample number 2, this was sample number 1. In addition to these two sample, which are neither corresponding to very loose sample nor achieved very high relative density. So, there are intermediate samples also, which will show some value of initial peak followed by which there was strain softening, then dilation and then further that will continue. So, this is corresponding to intermediate samples, intermediate samples or intermediate rather samples we should call it as intermediate densities, intermediate densities. The sample has been subjected to intermediate densities and uh, strain uh, stress control te uh, test. So, this is representation of we, here we can see initially it was showing some sign of contractive behavior reaching to peak uh, uh, strength and then followed by which suddenly it is showing some signature of dilation which is corresponding to dense sample. So, in between the two we may see also here there is change in the particularly from this particular part, it is showing some signature of phase transformation, phase transformation. Initially, the sample was showing signature of loose material, where some peak strength has achieved. After this, there was strain softening. Later on, the sample continued to show signature of dilation and then it continued for larger value of strain. So, in between the the prominent feature which is indication of loose specimen and indication of dense specimen, there has been a phase transformation. So, all the samples which are corresponding to intermediate densities or showing phase transformation are classified as sample related to limited liquefaction. So, these are the samples which may or may not undergo liquefaction, but always at boundary conditions. So, if favorable conditions are given in terms of confining pressure in terms of uh, uh, void ratio, then there are chances or in terms of external loading condition, then these samples can undergo liquefaction. If those favorable conditions are not given, the sample may not undergo liquefaction. So, same thing if we are interested to find out, we can also develop this in terms of effective mean principal stress and average uh, uh, confining pressure that is P equals to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 over 2 and Q equals to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 over 2. So, sigma 1, sigma 2 corresponding to confining pressure and sigma 3 is corresponding to major principal stress and then in the uh, sigma 1 is corresponding to major principal stress, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are corresponding to uh, confining pressure in orthogonal direction. So, this is going to represent average or mean principal stress and this is going to represent the confining pressure. Now, here if we are interested corresponding to liquefaction, it has been observed like all the sample with respect to initial state of the soil. So, with respect to initial state, the samples can be located over here corresponding to initial state of the sample there might be some value of mean effective stress or uh, uh, mean principal stress which can be located over here as with this particular point representing initial state of the soil. So, this is initial state of the soil. Now, with respect to initial state of the soil two samples are there one is liquefaction. So, all the samples 
which are corresponding to loose specimen, initially there will be some contractive behavior followed by which the sample will continue for the sample will continue like this and reach to very high value of axial strain that is corresponding to very low value of Q. So, here also we can see this is the same level of confining pressure which is shown in figure number 1 or figure number A, figure number B. So, the value of Q which is shown on y axis in figure number A, the same values of Q will be transferred to figure number B. So, uh, referring to the initial state of the soil, the sample which were corresponding to very loose soil actually shown initially contractive behavior followed by which loss of confinement and the same will continue to very large value of axial strain. So, this is corresponding to loose specimen and you can call it as this is the state in which the soil is able to explain the initiation of flow, initiation of uh, I mean how, how the characteristics of the medium changes with respect to initial state such that a situation favorable to flow to be triggered in the soil specimen is uh, initiated at the site. Again at the same time loose specimen, uh, dense specimens are there. So, dense specimen initially there will be uh, you can see this is continuously undergoing dilation not much of change in terms of uh, I mean initially we can see there is significant change here if we focus we will see the increase in confining pressure is happening at much faster rate and not that much increase in the external loading condition. But at the same time once it reaches I mean after uh, intermediate stage or in between the lower uh, axial strain and intermediate uh, axial strain there will be dominated behavior of dilation followed by which though there is increase in confinement, but there will be significant jump in terms of axial strain as well. So, this will continue corresponding to same procedure which is given over here. So, this is corresponding to intermediate intermediate axial strain and this was corresponding to low value of confining pressure which is representation of very high value of axial strain. Now, in between the two, so this is corresponding to intermediate axial strain, this is dilation possible indication of dense specimen. So, dense specimen are there which are showing the behavior of dilation. In between the two, there were also intermediate samples, so which will initially show the characteristics of loose specimen followed by which there was phase transformation. So, here we can see phase transformation is happening over here. So, this particular level if we continue like this that will be indication of phase transformation. So, we can mark this phase transformation corresponding to this particular site and then finally, the sample is also reaching more or less to the same uh, state of the soil which is happening at very high value of axial strain. So, this is corresponding to intermediate densities intermediate relative densities samples which initially showed signature of loose specimen showed peak uh, uh, confining pressure peak strength is there and then followed by which there is contactive behavior that will continue to larger strain followed by which in between it also showed the signature of phase transformation which is marked by this particular location in intermediate sample phase transformation or phase change followed by which the samples were started showing the signature of dilation and that continue even to larger value of strain. So, this is again phase transformation. Now, collectively same thing if you are interested to find out based on axial strain versus change in pore water pressure. 
So, delta u is there which is indication of pore water pressure, how the pore water pressure is changing and with respect to pore water pressure this is again the same value of axial strain. So, three samples are there if we remember dense specimen, dense specimen when these are subjected to increase in diabetic stress what will happen? The sample will undergo strain softening, the particles will start moving collapse will be there as a result there will be increase in uh, there will be re uh, reduction in the pore water pressure or development of negative pore pressure as a result of which there will be increase in the confinement. So, if we discuss with respect to uh, uh, pore water which is mentioned over here this is pore water pressure. So, dense specimen will be showing an indication initial contractive behavior that means initially the sample was undergoing contraction, there was reduction in the word ratio, subsequently there was pore water pressure, positive pore pressure which was generating and once the sample has uh, started showing the signature of strain softening, the development of negative pore water pressure which is shown by as a result with respect to this origin you can see the behavior has actually gone down or there is development of negative pore pressure. So, if this you consider as positive this is basically negative. So, negative pore pressure has been generated in the soil sample which is corresponding to dense specimen. And we can also say as no liquefaction. On the contrary, the samples which were subjected to continuous, uh, I mean loose samples were there. So, corresponding to loose samples, we can see continuously the sample was showing contractive behavior. Initially, there was peak strain, collapse was there, but if we say in terms of pore water pressure, continuously with respect to initial state of the soil, the sample has been subjected to increase in pore water pressure. Now, here we can see. I am starting the curves with respect to dense specimen or with respect to loose specimen as well, loose or very loose specimen. So, all those samples I am starting with pore water pressure equals to 0. That means, as far as liquefaction initiation is concerned, whether it is related to static loading condition, whether it is related to blasting, construction activity, earthquake loading condition the situation at the site is such that before these external loading condition which actually triggered liquefaction were not applied to the sample, the sample was showing no signature corresponding to development of excess pore pressure. That is why the value of delta u in all these are corresponding to 0 value. So, there is no signature corresponding to delta u. On the contrary, if you go into uh, figure 1, those were indicating that when the sample were subjected to external loading condition which, which might have triggered liquefaction because we are interested to learn here about initiation of liquefaction with respect to initial state of the soil. In such case whatever might be the external loading condition because of static loading, dynamic loading, construction activity, explosion these are additional state of stress, but before these states of stress have come into picture sample whether it is located at uh, the soil which is located maybe at the foundation level, it may be used for parking space, it might be used for railway embankment, it might be used as base of retaining wall, bridge abutment. At each of these conditions there was some initial state of the soil which was not corresponding to 0. That means, because of loading condition before the sample was subjected to additional loaded which triggered liquefaction the sample were having some minimum value of confining pressure. So, that is not indicated by q is not equal to 0 at initial state, q is not equal to 0. It is representing some minimum value of stress which is representation of how much stress is because of external loading condition at which your designer declared that the soil is under static loading uh, under given static loading condition, the foundation is safe, bridge abutment is safe there is no, no indication of uh, differential settlement or total settlement because of 
additional force which is which is likely to induce liquefaction in the soil. So, this is corresponding to very uh, loose specimen though initially it was showing some sign of peak value, but overall if you see the nature is representation of contractive behavior as a result this can also be indicated by means that there is continuous increase in the pore water pressure in loose specimen which is also indication of liquefaction. Dense specimen there is no liquefaction, loose specimen, very loose specimen there is liquefaction and again if we are talking about limited liquefaction. So, there were samples if we are taking this phase transformation into account. So, here we can talk about the samples. Initially there was the sample started taking load, contractive behavior was there, it reached to peak value. So, subsequently there was increase in pore water pressure and subsequently the sample also started showing some signature of dense specimen that means dilation it was shown. The moment sample shows dilation on this particular point that is why it is also marked here as phase transformation. So, initially when the sample was showing signature corresponding to loose specimen there was development of pore water pressure the sample reached to peak strength followed by which there was some strain softening and then sample showed this is about intermediate sample. So, we, here also we can write as it is corresponding to intermediate densities. So, intermediate density again there is phase transformation then we can see the sample is showing dilation and as a result of which there is development of negative pressure, negative pore pressure, development of of course, this particular development of negative pore pressure will not be as high as corresponding to dense specimen because uh, uh, with respect to the initial state of the soil and with respect to the density of the medium. So, development of negative pore pressure which subsequently was shown over here with respect to whether we are talking in terms of dense specimen or whether we are talking in terms of intermediate soil. In both the cases it was represented by means of increase in confinement. So, negative pore pressure that means there will be increase in the confinement. So, development of negative pore water pressure in intermediate samples in intermediate samples. So, this is again indication of limited liquefaction. limited liquefaction. It is always called as limited liquefaction because based on the densities of the medium, it is very difficult to bifurcate this understanding of intermediate samples or phase transformation to a dense sample or to loose samples. So, this is showing collective signature with respect to loose as well as dense specimen. At lower value of axial strain, it is showing more or less the signature corresponding to loose specimen reaching peak value then strain softening is there as it the moment it reaches intermediate value the sample the same sample which was initially showing contractive behavior will also start showing some signature of dilative behavior at intermediate axial strain. There will be increase in which is mentioned over here there is increase in axial strain which is mentioned over here also this particular phase is indication increase in the uh, confining pressure or development of excess, negative excess pore pressure as a result of which there is increase in the confinement at intermediate axial strain and the same procedure will continue to larger axial strain. So, this continues to even to larger value of axial strain and this will continue. So, unlike dense specimen where the dilation was uh, arrested till intermediate strain, this is corresponding to intermediate strain. In case of loose specimen, the same procedure continued to very high value of excess strain. If you are talking about intermediate, though it was showing some signature of dilation, but it was the rate at which the increase in uh, confining pressure was shown it was more or less constant. So, it was not further increasing as was shown in case of 
completely dense specimen. As a result, this procedure, this nature of showing increase in confinement that further did not happen and, and we can see over here also this particular phase of increase in confinement initially happened and then it continued further with respect to the initial state of the soil. Though there is a decrease in the uh, pore water pressure or development of negative pore pressure, but further at uh, beyond uh, intermediate axial strain this particular phenomenon of further increase in negative pore pressure will not continue for intermediate sample. As a result, now collectively if we see over here what is happening when we loaded three sort of samples uh, and tested in stress control test and what we are trying to understand how there is change in confining pressure, how there is change with how there is change in the confining pressure which is also giving when the favorable condition related to flow of soil liquefaction means the soil has almost transformed from initial state where which was quite stiff to almost a state which is resemblance of uh, flow. So, when wherever the moment the soil is subjected to a state where there is either there is reduction in the confinement which is again indication of flow because now the soil can undergo flow or there is a, a state which is triggering in the soil which is mentioned over here also like the moment where the soil is subjected to any additional load which is more than the load uh, uh, which is more than the state of stress which is developed in the soil corresponding to very high value of axial strain. That means the in situ strength of the soil is significantly low and the additional load has generated significantly higher value of stresses. In such a case the soil will undergo failure which is also representation of flow characteristics of liquefaction. So, further definition about flow liquefaction and cyclic mobility we will discuss in uh, lecture 23. Now, corresponding to this understanding where we are uh, trying to understand more or less how the void ratio of the soil sample particularly in drain test it is changing for three state of the soil with respect to what was the initial state of the soil and what was the uh, density of the medium. So, based on which what we understood that there is that there is there is unique relationship unique relationship between void ratio that is actually triggering the favorable condition with respect to whether it is generation of pore water pressure or negative pore pressure and confining pressure or we can more specifically mention as effective confining pressure. And this is usually happening at large axial strain. As far as flow is concerned, this is a phenomena corresponding to large axial strain. So, we are taking large axial strain. So, when this particular relationship, when this relationship is plotted plotted on void ratio and confining stress uh, confining stress curve or graph again it is it shows a unique behavior it shows a unique behavior unique behavior. So, observing the same things where you are in interested to find out corresponding to this particular void ratio which is basically indication of like after this particular void ratio or after this particular confining pressure there will be continuous flow in the material. This is an indication of steady state of the soil. So, based on this it is shown a unique behavior the locus of all points, locus of 
all points at various confining pressures so uh, corresponding to different different value of confining pressure again there will be a state which is representation of uh, flow uh, a plot can be obtained a plot parallel to cvr line parallel to and also lower to parallel to and also lower to cvr line is obtained so here again we can see if we can recollect cvr line it was again void ratio versus sigma c here in this particular case now we know so similar to that we are also getting in this particular case also this particular line which is representation of state of the soil at different values of confining pressure which is representing the point of continuous flow or the void ratio corresponding to the state after which there is continuous flow which will be representation of loss of confinement and will continue to very large value of strain so accordingly a state so this is called as critical state uh, steady state line steady state line basically it is a projection of steady state line on e log sigma c curve on e log sigma c plot so a steady state here we are discussing about a steady state or a state is defined as a state is defined as a state where continuous deformation deformation at larger strain strain corresponding to corresponding to constant void ratio void ratio constant effective stress effective stress so this is basically indication of a state of the soil where there is continuous larger deformation happening at larger strain at constant void ratio and constant effective stress so this particular plot which is representation of the locus of all points representation of the same void ratio representation like after this particular there will be larger deformation representation of representation of continuous flow representation of flow this particular state it is called as steady state line it is in the soil medium so with respect to this particular line again if one is interested to find out whether the soil at a particular site will undergo liquefaction or not because this has been identify or the steady state line has been identified we can also call it as ssl it has been identified based on the initial state of the soil as well as the the void ratio corresponding to larger deformation so with respect to this particular line one can also identify ssl is useful is useful in identifying soils likely to undergo liquefaction or not or not so here we can say all the samples soils 
with initial state with initial state below SSL are not susceptible. So, all the samples which based on the initial state are located over here, these are not susceptible. So, you can say not susceptible to liquefaction and this is now reclassified with respect to steady state line. Similarly, all the samples which are located above not susceptible. Similarly, soils which are with initial state above steady state line are susceptible, susceptible to liquefaction. So, based on this particular state which is identify a steady state of the soil which is representation of flow liquefaction in terms of larger strain and uh, loss of confinement. It is basically now this particular line with respect to which taking the initial state of the soil one will be able to identify whether it is falling in non susceptible zone or it is falling in susceptible zone. So, all the soils which are above it that will be called as potential to liquefaction which are below which are not susceptible to liquefaction. As far as limited uh, liquefaction is concerned, one has to take into account the characteristics of external loading condition in terms of a reduction in the uh, increase in the confinement or reduction in the confinement. Subsequently, that can be correlated also with respect to poor water pressure negative or uh, positive generated during loading condition. So, that collectively we help in understanding whether the soil is susceptible to liquefaction or not with respect to any uh, steady state line. So, in uh, next lecture, in lecture 23, we will be discussing about two phenomena which are actually representing liquefaction at the site. With respect to initial state which we have discussed over here, we will try to find out what is happening uh, when the soil sample is subjected to external loading condition representing the flow liquefaction or cyclic mobility. So, thank you everyone. Here we will close this particular lecture. Mm -hmm.